Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good Sunday morning on this 414 day. For those of you that are local, you know what 414 means. That's 414 day or Milwaukee day here in the southeastern Wisconsin area. 414 being the Milwaukee primary Milwaukee area code. So happy 414 day to those of you local. <clears throat> um, this has been an interesting morning for me, so we'll press along and see what happens. But uh, my dog is not doing too good. Um, she's, I mean, it's nothing serious. From time to time, she'll have bouts with, um, I don't know if I want to put it out here on the ether to be, to be too graphic, but she has bathroom problems. So um, I have medicine for that. And this morning I administered some of it. She's been getting us up quite a bit uh, in the middle of the night, the last couple of nights. And so I've had to, uh, uh, this morning, I, I, I uh, coming home from the gym, I came home to a pretty significant mess that I spent most of the morning cleaning up. So, and then taking care of the dog, of course. And uh, so I thought about bringing her down here with me so I can keep an eye on her. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm going to try and keep this show short today. Not much to talk about anyway. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. My, uh, I've been so busy uh, last week, week and a half to two weeks. I, I've just had no time for the arcade. Um, I did have some time this week that I carved out for uh, the latest update to Retro Shooter. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit. In, in in a little while. So <clears throat> the first thing I want to mention right off the bat is, uh, and I've mentioned this on my community uh, post and also in the description of this video uh, or this stream. Uh, the next two weekends, I'm going to be uh, unavailable. So I won't be able to do a show uh, on 421 or 428. So just so you all know, um, the these are things that I need to take. I, I need to do some things to uh, get my car ship shape for um, some road trips that we're taking. So next weekend, I'll be sitting in a tire center getting new tires. I already have the appointment booked and everything. So <clears throat> another expense added to me. I think my total now is I'm up over four grand in expenses in the last 30 to 90 or 60 days. So, uh, yeah, been interesting time for me. Um, uh, so that leads to another topic I want to discuss in budgeting and how you handle budgeting. So <clears throat> I think it's important and especially in a hobby like this that everybody sets a budget and we're going to talk about that a little bit. I, I touched on it yeah, very early on when I started streaming. And I think it's probably a good time to bring it up, especially with the summer season coming and some anticipated deals and some cabinets coming out. <clears throat> but uh, what else? Let's talk about the arcade a little bit. Well, you all know that I had to sell a bunch. That was covered last weekend. Uh, no change there. I haven't bought any uh, cabinets. I, I can't really afford to right now. But I I have what I've, I've tried to focus on is improving the ones that I have. So uh, with that in mind, this past week, <clears throat> I set about, uh, last weekend I had already uh, updated the retro shooter console to the latest firmware re revision. But this week, during the week, I spent some time um, uh, downloading the uh, updated package from retro shooter that added uh, more uh, games to the uh, the system, and that includes several Laserdisc games, and then of course um, the the one that's most anticipated by a lot of people, uh, RevX. So um, that's all done. Um, it's uh, I'm impressed with the update, but I, I'm going to talk about a little bit about why I did why I went about the update the way I did. So we'll talk about that. Let's let's check out the chat before we dive into everything here. Uh, Carl's here, uh, earlier on, uh, Gotham city arcade was here. And so was Cornercade. 
Thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate you you showing up and, and joining me this morning. At some point, I'm going to have a guest on. I don't know if I'm comfortable doing that right now. Um, I'd like to have Danny on at some point, and I'd like to have PD7 on. Uh, those are two local Wisconsin guys, and uh, I'd like to have them on at some point, but not today. And um, so maybe a future show after I come back from hiatus, we'll plan on uh, doing a side-by-side chill and chat or something like that. <clears throat> okay. So let's, let's first dive into my latest mod, soft mod, really. And this is my community post that I made about the retro shooter mod. Um, now, I don't know how much those of you that own the retro shooter kit um, and and have and have upgraded to firmware and uh, are looking for the download file. I don't have that information handy right now. Um, and it's out there. It's out there in the Facebook group. Uh, check out the Retro Shooter Facebook group. All you got to do is search for um, upgrade, and you should be able to find the post. <clears throat> if not, try a couple other terms. But anyway, um, I. Uh, I went about my uh, adding of the the download kit to Retro Shooter a little bit differently, and this was mentioned. I'm going to give him a shout out. He's another local guy in, in the Sheboygan area, Jason Beardsley, and uh, he he is active in the community in that he he mods a lot of things and turns them around, and um, and he uh, deals with a lot of Airbnbs, I think, and. Uh, so, but Jason posted this method uh, in one of the, the the groups. I believe it was the Retro Shooter group as well. And I kind of uh, I wanted to flesh it out and document it a little bit, a little bit more. But there's three software packages that I use, and I'll show you them as we go along. But uh, so there's two schools of thought. Uh, one, the the main thing, and this is what Retro Shooter is is kind of telling everybody to do, is to copy these files that are downloaded in, onto a USB and then plug the USB into an available port on the retro shooter. The caveat with that is, is if you're like me and you have the Buy Stuff Arcades uh, T2 uh, retro shooter integration kit, all of those USB ports are taken. So you would have to get a USB hub in order to uh, make this make a, an external USB with uh, the downloaded files available to uh, the retro shooter game. And that's what they're, that's the method that they're recommending or they're, they've put in their post or their information. And um, so it, it, it became discussed, it was starting to get discussed in the retro, one of the retro shooter posts that, well, Hey, why don't you just expand the file system on the existing SD card? Um, on a larger SD card. Well, that made sense to me. And for, and strictly for a cleaner look for me internally, I, th I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to really want to attach another USB stick to the unit. So I decided to uh, go about this route. Um, and that this is the route that you see uh, before you. Uh, it involves uh, it involves basically take the retro shooter comes with a 64 gigabyte SD card. That's not enough to add these extra files that they've provided. Um, if you look at that SD card, the original one, you have about two gigabytes of disk space left. The problem is, is the files that you can download to add. If you do them all take up between, I believe it's 13 to 14 gigabytes. Well, that's not enough, obviously. So that's why they're telling people to use an external USB. Well, this method before you here will get you to where you need to be so that you can add those files without having to use an external USB. So first things first, I like being the IT guy that I am, I like to back things up first and have them as a fallback in case I need to. 
So using the Win32 disk imagery utility, I took a image of the uh, original 64 gigabyte SD card provided by RetroShooter. Actually did that a long time ago uh, when I first got the RetroShooter kit because it's just something I do. I, I back things up before I use them. So uh, I backed it up this time because of obviously the firmware upgrades. I don't know if the firmware, anything firmware related gets written to the SD card or not. Not sure. But as a precaution, uh, before any upgrade, I, I decided to back it up. So I used the Win32 disk image utility. And I, in doing this, I, I was having difficulties uh, with the created image, rewriting it back out to the new SD card. So I decided, well, I'm going to have to do verifies here to make sure the image is good. So that's why you see took image with verify. So let me do it this way. So anyway, I basically took that image and it takes about an hour to dump the image and then another hour to verify the image. So that's why I have two hours here. Uh, secondly, I then took that 64 gigabit image that I had just written and then wrote it out to the new 128 gigabytes micro SD card with a utility called Bellina Etcher. And that took one hour because it's only a 65 gigabyte image. And I didn't do a verify after that. I don't think Bellina Etcher, well, yeah, it might get, let you do a verify. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't do one here in this case. So it took an hour to write the image back out to the new SD card. So now what you're left with after this step is, uh, and a 128 gigabyte SD card with an, a 68, a 64 gigabyte uh, image written to it. That means there's 64 gigabytes of freed up disk space that the file system on there that we just laid down doesn't know about. So what we need to do in the next step is expand that 64 gigabyte partition to the full 128. So the tool I use there is mini tool partition wizard. These are all sim very simple utilities to use. They're, they're not, you don't need to know a whole lot about computers. You just, I mean, there's not very many options. Uh, mini tool partition wizard is probably the most complex of the three that I use for this. And so what you basically have to do there is uh, you, you select the partition where the 60, where you've written the 64 gigabyte, you have to be careful about this too, because if you misuse this utility and select the wrong partition, you run the risk of overriding your laptop or computer, whatever you're doing this on OS. So you be very careful when you're using this utility. Uh, make sure you're selecting the partition that is the micro SD card. And once you've selected it and you know you've selected it, there's an option for expand partition. Uh, menu option off to the left side. I'd show you these utilities, but I don't have them installed on this laptop here. I, I did them upstairs on my office computer. So uh, I grew, I used the mini tool partition wizard to expand it from 64 to 128. So now I have this SD card that has a full 128 gigabytes of disk space available to it. And uh, so what do I do being the IT guy that I am? I take a backup of that. So I use, went back and used Win32 Disk Imager um, in step four and backed it up again just to make me feel better. And then uh, after that was done, that took four hours because now I'm up to 128 gig. It takes two hours to read the image, two hours to verify the image. I'm just very cautious. And I, had, I basically did this over several days uh, overnight. So... I started it and let it run. So once all that was done, once I got done with step four, I moved on to step five, which was to put it back in the retro shooter and fire it up. And uh, it worked. So I have 128 gig uh, available, probably about 80% of that uh, available now because I've added the, the package from retro shooter. And I'm up to date. I'm totally up to date on that retro shooter box. So 
that's that. Uh, and just to give you, well, I'm not going to show it, but um, suffice it to say, I tested out a couple of the uh, added games and they work. Um, they work perfectly. And I'm a big fan of RevX. So I'm having a lot of fun. It reminds me of T2 in a lot of ways, but with different scenarios and uh, kind of looks like they were made by the same company anyway. So anyway, so let's set that topic aside now and uh, we'll uh, check the chat. Let's see who else is here. Corner Cade's back. Thank you. Uh, thank you for showing up, Corner Cade. Um. Smirnoff Golden Tea. No, I have not seen that. Not seen it at all. Uh, I don't. I have a, a an ex coworker that is very much into leasing. I'm not. I like to own my shit. So, um, living up here in Hartford, I am not too close. Well, I have some dealers, but near me. But I, I'd rather. I have my own trusted mechanic. So usually when something breaks, I take it to him. Uh, tires. Tires are like an operating cost. They, I mean, it's just something you have to do every few years. And I, I'm of the belief that these are the, the same set of tires that damn things had since day one. So um, there's no way I'm going to take this thing on the road again with the tires that I have. <clears throat> Especially when I can start seeing... Um, it worn out on the sidewalls. So um, that'll get done next weekend. So no show next weekend. And then the following weekend, uh, the gal and I are going to be in St. Louis running the half marathon there. And, and I have some family down there too. So we're going to, we're going to see my family, see their kids and their kids, kids and, and all of that. And it's been a while since I've seen them. Okay. Um, well, I talked about the uh, the update. What else was I going to talk about? Um, well, let me run through this real quick. Uh, just to step back the utility I talked about earlier. So this is the Win32 disk image. If you search for these, these terms on Google, you'll find these websites. Um, this is the Win32 disk imager site official site you this is where you could download that to take your image then here's Belina etcher very simple utility to write a partition back out to an sd card and then the mini tool partition wizard has its own website and uh so yeah so that's that Uh, Carl, I don't know what the weather forecast is going to be in St. Louis. I haven't looked that far ahead. Let's do that right now. This is how I have my phone with me. Weather bug, 10 day forecast. Do I have St. Louis in here? No, I do not. So let's add St. Louis. Live TV, folks. I wonder why St. Louis is not coming up. Really, it's giving me a St. Louis, Canada and a St. Louis, France. Well, I'll check the forecast later. I don't know why it's being a B and not telling me. Missouri, Missouri. Wow. Yeah, St. Louis is not listed in here at all. I'll have to look at the forecast later. Hopefully it's not raining. I don't like rain and running. I, I do if it's warm. But if it's a cold rain, ugh, ugh, you're just miserable. Oh, what should we talk about? Let, let's... Uh, Let's bring this in. Everybody's heard this by now. Um, 
Best Buy has posted Golden T del, uh, 3D Deluxe. Um, I do want this. Not right now, though. Not in my current situation. So um, hopefully there's plenty of units that will be left uh, later on in the year, and I can still pick this up. But I, I, I sold my Golden T 3D XL, and I'm, I'm not heartbroken that I let that go because, number one, I did not like the trackball. And uh, number two, I needed the money at the time. So it was an easy decision. I miss bowling. I like that bowling game. So I'm going to get it back at some point, but in the deluxe format. And I've kind of made that decision now. I'm kind of going to stick with the deluxe format rather than XL, even though behind me you see the Pac-Man XL. And I'm just, there's one more XL that I'm going to buy. And we'll discuss that in a second here as well. <clears throat> But anyway, Best Buy has this up for pre-order now, $499.99, which I think is a good price for the Deluxe starting out. Um, will I wait for a sale? Yeah. Uh, they talked about on Super Game Room Dudes the other night about, um, a, you know, look for deals, you know, like around Father's Day. And that's just speculation, but it's actually good speculation. It's, you know, that, that would be a good time for them to knock off $100 off the game in honor of Father's Day because a lot of fathers would probably want to buy this. So, or maybe their uh, kids or, or, or even their wives will want to pick this up for them on Father's Day. So maybe I'll make it a Father's Day present to myself. If it's $3.99, I probably definitely will because you know, I'm not going to pass up $3.99 on this again. So, yeah, so uh, let me know in the chat if you un intend to get the Golden Tea 3D Deluxe. Uh, hey, Chaotic. Uh, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, they kind of did miss the Masters with this thing. Um, I, it, it's it, it's right around... I mean, the announcement came out right around the, the Masters. So... Maybe get the, you know the pre maybe getting the pre orders started was enough for them. I don't know. It's hard to speculate what what they think these days. But at least they did that. They got it out there. They made the announcement and and they they've made it available for pre order. I just got all my cabs paid off, so I'm my cab budget is uh, clear right now but uh with all the money i've spent you know i i need to be careful about what I, what i spend it on these days uh real moflo is here welcome real moflo good to see you um i happened to buy the xl uh on sale at best buy i i was one of the lucky ones that jumped in on the 315 sale on the xl but right away i turned around and replaced the monitor so that was like I forget how much the monitor cost. It was like around 120, 130. And uh, the trackball, not a fan. So I'm, gl I'm glad that, uh, that uh, I was able to sell it. And, um, and, and, and I'll, I'll look forward to this one. But good to hear that you're going to be picking it up as well. I think a lot of people are going to be, a lot of people in the community are probably going to be picking this up at one point or another, not right away. A lot of people are against pre-orders. I generally am. <clears throat> uh, well, Danny, I will tell you, I just, I don't have the time. Uh, during the week, I am super busy. You know I go to bed early, so there's no way I'm doing a show in the evening. And uh, could I do a Saturday show next weekend? Actually. Actually, yes, I could. So it depends. If I have to take my dog to the vet and I have to schedule an appointment tomorrow for her, it'll probably be scheduled for Saturday. So that would rule out a show on Saturday. But we'll. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, Danny, I'll think about it. I'll think about it for next Saturday. If there's, if there's some stuff I want to talk about, Towards the end of the week, I'll put up a community post and let everybody know that I plan to do a show. But <clears throat> um, at this point, right now, I'm taking a two-week hiatus. But 
I'm not going away. Just uh, due to life events, I'm taking a break. Do a walk and talk at the Indy 500. Um, you know what? That's not a bad idea. I love. Um, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I mentioned on a, a stream or two ago that I was a, 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 a photographer, a journal, a photojournalist at at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway during their events during the year. I work for a local paper, and so I. I spend a lot of time at that track. I grew up with that track. I'm from Indianapolis. So the 500 is part of who I am. So IMS is, I consider a home for me. That place is just, there's something, if you've been to in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway before, you know the feeling you get when you walk underneath that tunnel into the track. It's, it's like no other feeling. So I, I look forward to this time of year every year because it's time for me to step back, take a breath, take some pictures, uh, turn some in if I get, get some cool shots. And I do turn some in from time to time, and I have been published. So, um, yeah, walk and talk at the track sounds good. I might just do that. That's in May. So mid-May and the end of May. I'll be there twice during May. I'll be there. There'll be some <laughs> more hiatuses in May because uh, I'll be I'll be in Indianapolis twice. And uh, so I don't think I'll be doing shows those weekends either. Well, I know I won't because, especially during the 500, because the 500 is on, uh, on the day I would normally do a stream. So, And it's a no-no for me to record video while – track action actually it's a no-no for me to record video at all um but live streaming i don't know how they'd feel about that as long as i'm not shooting track action i'd probably be okay because they don't want uh they don't want to conflict with any tv broadcast rights and so it's always said to us in the photo safety meetings that you shoot video and you don't have a video vest on, you're you're tossed, you're out. So I don't want to do anything that gets me in trouble with IMS. So, but it's a fun time. I enjoy, I look forward to it every year. Um. So yeah, Golden TXL, we talked about that. But let's move on to this next thing. Uh, I don't know if, how many of you have seen James Hates Everything's video from uh, last night. Um, he, last night, he made a short video about Miss Pac-Man XL and Costco. He basically has some information from apparently a Costco insider. I don't know who this guy is. James, I, I guess, would know who it is because he's vouching for the information by posting it publicly. Um. I'm just uh, a little bit skeptical, but hopeful. And the one XL that I, I do want to purchase is the Miss Pac-Man XL in the powder blue scheme. And that would go nicely next to the Pac-Man in the back there that you see. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, let me know if you've seen James's video. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, he had some pretty specific number information from this, this person about how many were ordered. And uh, I believe the number was 15,500 units. So we'll see. Um, I'm glad I kept my Costco membership because now I've got something to look forward to. Two purchases that I have in, in, in the back of my mind right now are that I still want to get to Dragon's Lair which is one of the big four cabinets. And I have three of them myself. So I want, I want the fourth, which is Dragon's Lair, which are considered their um, best titles. So anyway, uh, 
so yeah, check out James's video uh, on YouTube. If you're not a member of his channel, go ahead and subscribe. He's got some good content from time to time. And he was here last week. I didn't get to meet him at the uh, uh, Midwest Gaming Classic, but he did some content from there that's actually pretty awesome. So check him out and uh, let me know what you think about the Miss Pac-Man XL rumor. Uh, is it? Do you believe it's true or do you believe we're... Uh, the other rumor is that it's going to be a golden TX, another golden TXL. I, I want to believe this one for, you know, cause I, I really want it. So anyway, okay. We talked about that. We talked about that. What else? Um, talked about the hiatus for a little bit. So, yeah, I, I understand. I totally understand. But for me, I'm a small guy. I'm only 5'7". So, um, Deluxe seems to be like the perfect height for me. And for, for my arcade and for what I feel is right for mine is, is the Deluxe form factor. I am going to buy the the Miss Pac-Man XL though. Cause I think that's beautiful artwork and a beautiful cabinet. And so and it'll go, it'll complement the, the Pac-Man XL that I have already too on along that wall. And will I keep my class of 81? I haven't decided yet. I might, I might just keep it or I might just sell it to help, help offset the cost of the Miss Pac-Man. Um, so uh, I know we're at 30 minutes now. I kind of wanted to keep it at 30 minutes, but I, there's still one more topic that I wanted to talk talk about. Um, and that's financially related. You folks out there know that are watching me right now that this ain't a cheap hobby. I mean, it's cheap enough. I mean, if we were if we were all into buying real arcade units, that'd be a lot more expensive. Or if we were into pinball, uh, real pinball games, that's even more expensive. But this hobby, well, it's kind of at that point where, you know, it's affordable, but, you know, depending on your income, you're kind of wanting to just stagger it a little bit. Uh, if you're like me, you, you like the environment more than you do the game. So you kind of go overboard and populating your arcade. Um, I'm at the point now where I've paid all of my arcades off. Um, so everything you see bef behind me and everything that I've previously sold is all paid for, done and paid for. But the, 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 the thing here is, is what worries me in this community is there's a lot of folk that are in the position that I am that are out there buying tons of, uh, arcade one ups and thinking, well, I'll just pay for it later. Well, I'm 58 years old now, folks. And I've been through a lot in my life and I'm not proud of some of the things I've been through. Um, I've, but I've used them. I've used them as growing experiences and learning experiences. And the thing that I've learned is, is that, and, and is that a budget is, extremely helpful and and you, you can have your income okay but a portion of or, or that that income you should treat uh you should budget and you should create you should um you shouldn't spend blindly from that income you should have a plan a plan is very important for your financial well-being. So what I what I mean by that is when you get your paycheck, okay, so you sit down and you decide how much am I going to spend on gas? How much am I going to spend on rent? How much am I going to spend or or mortgage? How much am I going to spend on utilities? Carve that out of the pie. Allocate that money and, and then groceries, uh, entertainment. You, you always have to set aside. I, I'm on the belief you always have to set aside money for entertainment. So you can do the things that you want to do and have fun. And then also, uh, I have a separate arcade budget. 
I have it's zero right now, but um, I have a fun. I, I set up funds, and so I carve my my paycheck into into these accounts, and so I spend from them. And what that allows me to do is to not uh, you know spend too too much uh, at any given time. I I know how much money I have in in any certain account. Um, I don't take away from grocery money. I don't take away from gas money. Gas has its own budget. Gas has its own money. Boom. You know, I don't have to worry about that fund ever being depleted because it's well taken care of. So is the grocery money. Those are the two big ones for me anyway. Um, and then, you know, every couple of weeks I go through and I, I, I reconcile my budget just to make sure everything agrees. I'm on track. I am not overspending. I, I just... The whole point of me talking about all of this right now is, you know, I just want folks to just take a step back, look at their finances. Don't try to, I don't, I don't want to pontificate here. Don't try to spend a, a lot of money you don't have on these things. Um, always, always, always try to save up for them and then buy them outright with cash. Cash is king. That statement is true, as is as true today as it was back when I was young, but um, it's always good to plan for emergencies too. And, and that's the one thing that I'm not good at. I'm not good at planning for emergencies. So I don't have an emergency budget per se. So I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it's good to have an emergency fund set aside that you can build over time so that when stuff like has happened to me, over the last month, month and a half, doesn't happen to you. Um, I've spent over four thousand dollars in the last last sixty forty five to sixty days. Um, I had a huge vet bill. I had a huge car repair. I had to order tires. And, uh, my Garmin crapped out on me. I have, by the way, I have a new Garmin watch. I love it. It's the Garmin. Uh, you can't really see it up close here, but it's the Garmin forerunner one six five just came out from Garmin. It's brand new. Um, thought about doing a review on it. I'm not really a wearable reviewer, but anyway, I've had all these things happen and I'm not begging for money or anything. That's the last thing I would ever do. Uh, I'm just saying uh, it's going to take me a while to dig out of this hole because I didn't plan for the hole. And I I'll do it because the way I budgeted it allows, gives me some leeway. Um, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say or communicate to everybody is just – check yourself when it comes to impulse buying of these machines. Is it, is, do you have the money? Do you have the free money to spend as opposed to swiping that credit card? Now, granted, you know, a lot of times we all order off Best Buy using a credit card. Well, pay that credit card bill off the next month. Uh, some, some folks, and I've done this myself, have used, uh, Interest, fi interest free financing for whatever term. Usually it's Best Buy. Uh, usually it's, I think, 12 months, 18 months sometimes. And I've, I've used that because that's that's handy. And I, I just paid off a lot of this streaming hardware that I have because uh, I bought it, most of it using Best Buy. And they had their, I think it was 18 month uh, no interest financing. So I just paid that off. And that's helpful. And if you can do that and, and, and you have a plan in front of you to knock that debt out on time or even earlier, great. By, by all means, use it. I'm a big fan of avoiding interest if at all costs. So I need to dig myself out of the hole, but I want you folks to look at yourselves uh, and just be mindful of of your finances, make sure, make sure you're taking care of the important things um, that you need to take care of. And I have my own cat. I have my own system of categories that I use budget categories. 
the big, you know, the primary ones, gas, groceries. Um, I, I have a big health budget because I have a gym membership and a Peloton membership. So I budget for, for those fees and it doesn't impact me because I've budgeted for them. So just uh, make sure you're not overspending with these things. Um, they're great to have. Um, it's exciting when you can buy one and build it and enjoy it. Um, I, I just, I've, I've, I've been there. I've been in debt. And one of the things I'm fighting going into retirement is staying out of debt. I don't want to be in debt going into retirement. I want zero debt. Now, granted, you're always going to have some, whether it be the mortgage or the, the car loan. Um, but it's just something that to, to be mindful of. Uh, I hope you guys are, are being responsible and uh, taking care of what needs to be taken care of before you consider buying an arcade one up or an at games um, or whatever other home arcade product you're looking at buying. So for me right now, I have to take a step back from buying. I, I, you know, I've gotten some major FOMO over that dragon's lair, but I'm, I'm avoiding it. I'm, I'm, I'm having to avoid it because I'm forced to. So, um, we'll talk about this more in future shows, uh, especially where I'm at. And, uh, if you see me buy a cab, well, you can shake your finger uh, in the next couple of weeks, you can shake your finger at, at me. You have every right to do so. And I thought you said you were going to take it easy for a while. It happens. Um, Let's say, for example, Best Buy did a $2.99 sale on Dragon's Lair. Would you pass that up? Probably not. Would I pass it up? Probably not. Because we all, we both know that that's a good deal. So, you know, if something like that happens, then yeah, I probably would pull a trigger on something. But with the prices they're at now, no. Anyway, I wanted to touch on that subject. I hope I didn't sound, I hope I didn't come across like a preacher or, or anything. I'm just worried that folks are just overspending. And I just want you all to take care of yourselves, take care of the ones you love. And um, don't do the things I did when I was young and uh, considered credit to be uh, a cash source because it's not. It's not, especially now with the interest rates, the way they've skyrocketed over the last year, year and a half. It's just incredible what the interest rates are now. It, you, you go down that rabbit hole and believe me, I've been there. I know what it's like. You go down that rabbit hole, you'll never get out of it unless you, you take dramatic action against it. So anyway, enough said. Oh, looking at the chat. Yeah, I bought a lot of tables for my at games as well. I, I do want to get it. Uh, that peanuts at games uh, 4K is just speaking to me. I really want to get it. I can't afford it. I know I can't afford it and I'm not going to charge it. I'm going to have the cash on hand to spend to get it. If I never get it because I never have the cash on hand, well, that's just life. That's that's what happens. It might I might maybe I'll get an uh maybe I'll get one a 4K a few years down the road. Well, by then it'll be a different K, who knows. But I'll I'll get I'll get it. I'll get one at some point, but I, Hey, Ralphie, thanks for uh, stopping by. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Cornicade really wants me to check his community post. Let's go check it out. Do, 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 Live TV, folks. Oh, okay. No, I did not see this. Let's bring this up. 
Uh, we'll bring that down. All right, so uh, Corner Kate has posted this on his community page. What's this? Smirnoff Ice Golden Tea 3D. Enter for a chance to win your own arcade one-up golden tea machine. Oh my gosh. Can I hit the dislike button? <laughs> That cabinet is ugly as sin to me. I'll give you a like there, Danny. Wow. That's, that's, wow. I mean, uh, can we get a better image of that? Because that marquee looks terrible. So I don't know what this, uh, folks, don't go to this website because I don't know how legit it is. Free one time only, expires 6-30-24, was added on 4-13-24. Cheers at Smirnoff.com. Let's go there and see if it's there. No, it did not take me there. See, I hope there's no virus associated with this website. Do they mention it on their... Oh, it wants me to enter my birthday. Nope, I'm not going to do that live on TV. Uh, see now this, this just speaks to me as scam malicious. I don't know. A hundred, they're going to give away a hundred arcade one ups. I don't know. Corner kid. I, I no. these websites look questionable to me. Folks don't do these websites. Okay. I mean, you got three separate website addresses doing the same contest. I, I'm of the opinion that this is some kind of scam. Maybe it's legit. I don't know. Look at all these websites, though, that are advertising it. Yeah. Um, so, folks, my advice is to stay away from this unless you see, and this is me, the IT guy speaking, okay? Because, number one, you don't want a virus on your computer going to one of these websites. And number two, you don't want to get taken advantage of, okay? The fact, the fact that this is on multiple uh, web links that look scandalous to me speaks to me as it being a scandal. And so, I mean, it's making the hair on top of my head stand up, really, from an IT perspective. So I, I avoid places like this at all costs. Um, unless you see this contest from Schmirnoff themselves, um, let's do something real quick. I'm going to take this off screen and I'm going to go to Schmirnoff's website. It's going to make me enter my birthday, which I'll do. All right, save on Schmirnoff. Okay, we're in the website. Now we're on Schmirnoff's website. We're scrolling. All right. So it is on their website. Okay. This is Schmirnoff.com, folks. 
Don't click on any one of those links in Google that I just showed you, okay? Don't. Um, is that image any better? No, it's not. I'm sorry, but that that J panel and that that marquee just look hideous to me. <laughs> and I can't even make out a clear image of what they really are. So this looks legit, okay? So if you want to enter this contest, don't go anywhere but cheers.smirnoff.com, okay? Don't don't click on any of those other links because you're only asking for heartache if you do. Well, my birthday's in there. Shoot. Oh, well. Okay, anyway, that's that. All right, we're we're coming up on, you know, we're at we're at fifty two minutes now. Um, I'm gonna call it now because I got to go check on my dog. So I appreciate everybody stopping by. Um, stay safe, everybody. Uh, enjoy the week. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your loved ones. Um, stay healthy, and uh, have a great week. Okay. I, thanks for joining me again. I'm not gonna be here next week unless. Unless I post about a Saturday show later in the week. We'll, we'll decide later in the week if I'm going to do a Saturday show. And, um, yeah, well, and if there, you know, as news pops up, you know, and I feel like I need to, I can add something to the conversation, you'll see a community post about it. Um, oh, one quick thing before I, I head out. Uh, I am still working on the um, the Simpsons two-player two control panel video. It's, ha it's still half done. I've, things have just been crazy for me. So it'll get done eventually. Uh, I'm still working on it. So I apologize for the delay in that. I, I just don't have a whole lot of time to dedicate to video editing. And the time that I do have, uh, I, I, I have to be careful. I have to carve it out for the, the gal that I love, make sure we're spending time together and, uh, you know, doing, doing the things that are really important in life. So I'll, I'll get it done. It's just going to take me time to, to do it. Um, so anyway, have a good week. Uh, great talking with you guys again. Uh, thanks for joining the stream. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, I'll see you guys uh, when I see you. Okay. Have a good week. Bye now.